You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, the stench of desperation. Do you smell that? Ah, yes. The sickly sweet smell of desperation wafting around the world from the Monty Shitshow mansion of Harry's wife. What is it this time that she's so desperate about? Well, unsurprisingly, it links to the prime aims of ensuring that she has control and draws fuel from people. Things really aren't going very well for Harry's wife. Snubbed by the A-listers, political ambitions seemingly going nowhere and unlikely to ever do so. I'll be reporting on that in a forthcoming video as to how she'll never get into the White House. The fact that the only person that seems to invite them round these days is Ellen DeGeneres, and that's because she's largely persona non grata with many people herself and is desperate to at least have somebody that she can cause to squat and take the piss out of. A supposedly burgeoning career as an author has gone up the swanee. She's no fashion icon, as we know. The various ghastly outfits of Kermit Goes to Church, Tent by Army Surplus, The Bouncing Berry of Harlem, Chairman Mao Goes to New York, Fridge by Valentino, One of Our Jowls is Missing, Teacup by Royal Dalton, Hyacinth Bouquet's settee cover, and many others, a testament to the fact that a supposed career as a fashion icon is denied to her. Roundly ridiculed as a consequence of the content of Spare, groaned at as a consequence of the self-indulgent wankfest that was the shit flick series, and of course, fresh off the spanking that they've just received courtesy of South Park, things are not going well for Harry's wife as she faces challenge after challenge after challenge. And therefore, as always, the only thing that she's able to do is try and rally through the application of some PR dollars some of the supine publications. You recall that this stable includes People.com, Town and Country, Hello, Tatler, Harper's Bazaar, sometimes the Daily Mirror, Cosmopolitan, Marie Claire, and Vanity Fair. This time it falls to Vanity Fair in an article which smacks of being written by Harry's wife herself. I'll let you determine whether you think that's the case. But as a consequence of the repeated threats to control, she seeks to fight back. And in an article purportedly by Erin van der Hoof, it's entitled, A Brief History of the Trope That Harry's Wife Didn't Google the Royals Before She Married Harry. Now, this is something, of course, which was addressed years ago when she mentioned in the engagement interview that she didn't know much about Harry, hadn't Googled him, didn't know anything about him. And we know that this is basically a load of... <laughs> Why? Because there's plenty of people that have come out and have explained that she had an obsession with Diana, Princess of Wales. She was photographed outside of Buckingham Palace, that she had a shrine in effect to Diana, Princess of Wales... And there's been repeated pieces of evidence and information provided by other people that shows that she knew full well who the royal family is. And, of course, she would be entirely conversant with Googling somebody. Indeed. People of her generation, one of the first things you do to find out about somebody is bang their name into Google and see what comes up. Nearly everybody does it. And her, of course, as a narcissist, being driven by the need to know as part of the assertion of control, would undoubtedly have done it. But now we're being regaled with a supposed history that tells us she didn't do this. Not only is this shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted, but it also demonstrates the necessity and desperation that she exhibits in order to keep a certain control. Let's find out what the article says. In 2014, Harry's wife started a blog called The Tig, where she posted regularly about lifestyle topics and current events, facade management assertion of control. Though she shut down the website in April 2017, six months after her relationship went public, the posts were preserved on the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine, and occasionally tidbits will recirculate. 
On Wednesday, the Daily Mail brought back a 2014 entry she published referencing Prince William's 2011 wedding to Kate Middleton, citing it as evidence that Harry's wife couldn't have been telling the truth when she said she didn't know much about the royals before she met Prince Harry. All you need to do, of course, is go back and watch my video, Another Lie I Had No Idea, which examines this further. Hot off the heels of that threat to control by the Daily Mail, Vanity Fair have been tasked with addressing it. The writer continues, In the introduction to a blog entry where she interviewed Princess Alia al Sanusi, a descendant of Libyan royalty who works in the art world, Harry's wife mentioned that as a child she loved tough princesses like She-Ra from the 80s cartoon She-Ra, Princess of Power. She also mentioned that the idea of a princess still exerts power on adults too. Grown women seem to retain this childhood fantasy, she wrote. Just look at the pomp and circumstance surrounding the royal wedding and endless conversation about Princess Kate. You might think that calling her future sister-in-law Princess Kate might be a sign that Harry's wife didn't actually know too much about royal forms of address. Until Queen Elizabeth II's passing, her proper title was either Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, or Princess William of Wales. But to the male, this suggests that not only she knew exactly who the royals were, but that she'd formed several very strong opinions about the monarchy and its many traditions, years before she met her future husband. The idea that Harry's wife held very strong opinions about her future husband and his family originates in a statement Harry's wife made during the March 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey, when the Duchess said that, as an American, she didn't actually know too much about what joining the royal family would entail. I didn't do any research about what that would mean, Harry's wife said. I didn't feel any need to, because everything I needed to know he was sharing with me. Everything we thought I needed to know he was telling me. In the Oprah interview, Harry's wife does mention Google a little later when talking about learning the words to the national anthem and the hymns she would need to know for a church service. That's me, late at night, googling how, what's the national, I've got to learn this, she said. Somehow, within days, this turned into a widespread belief that Harry's wife didn't Google her husband. The Mail is not alone in returning to this line of attack against Harry's wife over the years. And last year, Tina Brown told Cara Swisher she thought Harry's wife's comment was very disingenuous and that she couldn't understand it. It would seem to me, if that's true, reprehensible quite honestly, she's added, because it's a serious thing to marry into this family. It's clear that Harry's wife knew who the most recognisable royals were before she met her husband, as we see from the blog post and footage uncovered in the 2022 Netflix series Harry and Harry's Wife, from a spring 2016 video where, when asked to choose between William and Harry, she chooses Harry. The issue here is exactly how much she knew before entering. For the British tabloids, the trope is an opportunity to accuse Harry's wife of being dishonest in a low-stakes technical way, but it also reflects a broader disconnect between how British people see the royal family and the way the rest of the world does. For average Americans, the idea that someone might not know the intricacies of royal tradition or the names of extended family members isn't too outlandish. In Harry and Harry's Wife, Harry's wife spent a bit more time explaining what she meant when she said she didn't know too much about the royal family and the British media when she started dating Harry. She confirms that she didn't do additional research about Harry after they first started messaging on Instagram. She explained her thinking at the time, hmm, let me see what they're about in their feed, not what someone says about them, but what they're putting out about themselves. In a particularly memorable scene from Spare, Harry notes that Harry's wife was unfamiliar with Prince Andrew when she first met the late Queen. After a moment, Harry's wife asked me something about the Queen's assistant, he wrote, adding that he didn't know who she was talking about. That man holding the purse, that man who walked her to the door, he, re he responded with a laugh, adding, she definitely hadn't Googled us. Load of bollocks, quite simply. And of course, this is a cack-handed attempt to try and suggest, you're all wrong when you say that I didn't know anything about them. So what about you being photographed outside Buckingham Palace? And what about your shrine to Diana, Princess of Wales? And what about all of the other evidence that you conveniently ignore in this article? It's laughable, really, that as a consequence of 
the Daily Mail allegations about uh, brought about from the 2014 blog entry, rather than just ignore it, Harry's wife feels motivated to try and set the record straight. And of course, her narcissism d- dictates her to issue an instruction through her PR people, or maybe directly to Vanity Fair, issuing the diktat, sort this out. They do so, but it's not particularly convincing. And in fact, all it does is, one, resurrect again, a matter of days later, the information about which the Daily Mail had written. Two, it causes everybody to look at it and think, doesn't really seem plausible to me, the explanations that she's given. Three, just reinforces the idea that she's protesting too much. And four, causes people to think, yes, you did know, and your attempts to complain that you didn't don't stack up. You're making it worse. This, of course, is the collateral consequence of her mid-range narcissism and demonstrates the lack of calculation by which she operates. Another ham-fisted attempt to assert control, which she subconsciously will get it, but it again results in these collateral consequences, which happens repeatedly with regard to Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.